Howdy, how's it going? Welcome back, or howdy if you're new. This is my heavily modded ROG Ally, and I'm sure you guys have probably already seen it before, and you may have even done some of the mods on your device. The one mod that I love the most are these PS5 joysticks and my D-pad right here. We'll dive into the D-pad probably in the next video because I needed to re-edit that. But let's talk about these sticks. I've seen half of you do it and have perfect success with no issues. And then I've seen another half of you guys just have some questions or you might not be able to get that right stick fully calibrated the way you want it. I'm gonna show you how to get this thing fully calibrated, fully set up. That way you don't run into any issues. And if you do, you know how to work around them. And if you like videos like this, please consider subscribing, leave a comment and let me know what you think about it. And also a huge, huge shout out to the channel OGs. You guys are the GOAT. Much love. I really appreciate your direct support. And if you'd like to support, check the links below. All right, well, let's dive right on in. So the first thing, these are PS5 joysticks. They basically swap right on. They're very easy to do. Here's the stock joystick cap. And here is the PS5 joystick cap. And when I say the joysticks, I'm talking about the caps in this video. We will try to change out the modules themselves soon, but for now and today, we're talking about strictly the caps. There are a lot of options when it comes to PS5 thumbstick caps. You can get, um, I've even seen some people have varying success with Xbox thumbstick caps. However, if you want to get the uh, magnetic Xbox Elite Series thumbstick caps, those themselves, the base plate won't fit because it actually has to screw on. You can get some that are retrofitted that were made for a PS5, but they accept the magnetic thumbstick cap. I haven't tested those yet, but I have seen a few people try it and say it does work. We'll revisit that later. So these thumbstick caps go on and off pretty easily. I'll show you at the end of the video how to do it again. If you haven't seen that video, definitely stay to the end or go check out the video on the instructions on doing that. So let's talk about stick calibration. I'm going to show you where mine sits at on the gamepad tester. It's hardwaretester.com slash gamepad. I'm going to show you how mine look and give you an example of what yours should look like. And we'll also dive into how to get them to look like this. So first of all, you can see they're dead centered. They're not off in the middle. They come right back to center perfectly fine. And then we can look right here and we can make a full circle on almost all of this. Now, here's the thing about it. I'm going to do the test circularity. Test these before you swap them out because I have noticed where some allies are doing this even stock and even the ally OGs and pretty much all of them. Joysticks are not always a perfect circle. Not sure if you knew that or not, but some people don't. So the error rate is going to be between 8 and 10%. Your mileage may vary depending on your luck and your sticks. This side over here is about an 8. So this side over here is a little higher, but I'll show you a few ways to correct that. It doesn't matter if you have errors. It just means that it's going a little bit past the edges and it's not as tight as it needs to be, but it's fine because you, do, you really just wanna make sure that these things are going to the edge themselves. If it goes past the edge, it's fine. It's completely fine, but I can actually work this around and you can see it goes to the edge. Stock mine were like this. So please don't think that this is a product merely of swapping these caps out because Mine were like this. Uh, I think the right side was just slightly lower and the left side still stayed about 8%. But we're going to we're gonna address that. We're going to recalibrate these and we're going to see if we can lower this anyways. So what you need to do when you are ready to recalibrate them after you've swapped them out, you'll want to go into your armory crate, go into settings, and then you'll go into calibration. Once you're in calibration, let's start with this right stick, okay? So now you will see this screen right here. Let's make sure this is full screen. I don't know why. There we go. Now we are full screen and we can hit calibrate or we can hit Y to revert to default settings. I usually do Y to revert them to stock settings before I start calibrating them because if they were previously calibrated, um, 
to the positioning of where they were installed, the height, there, there's some differences there and it might make calibration a little bit more difficult if you don't reset them to, to factory first. So now hit calibrate and you'll basically push this over as hard as you can and you'll release. You want to make sure that you are at least holding it to where it registers. It doesn't have to be perfectly in that circle, but it does help if you can get it close enough. And I'll show you in a minute on reasons why it might not be all the way over and ways we can work around that. So now you want to force that outer circle there. Just kind of roll it around like that. We'll calibrate one more time. And now you see it calibrates much easier. Sometimes you'll need to do this two or three times to get a perfect calibration. So don't be alarmed. This is the same on the OG Ally. I had to do this with a lot of these as well so okay our calibration is done now let's check our circularity again and look at that we have lowered our error rate from 11 to 10 so I dropped a whole percent off of there and we are hitting the outer circle we're going a little bit past that but that's fine we can actually adjust that in here so you can go here uh, oh before we go on to the next step let me show you how to calibrate the triggers because i have seen some people where the right trigger didn't uh, calibrate properly after removing them so y revert back to default settings hit a for calibrate keep the ally stationary and now you press the right trigger and hold it there you go and now your right trigger is fully calibrated and you can come over here to verify that it goes to one when you hold it down. You shouldn't have to force it. If you have to force it, you need to recalibrate it. And this one over there goes to one as well. Okay, so now let's talk about the dead zones and the outer dead zones. So you can go over here to control mode. I think it's control mode. Yes, control mode. You'll go to the right stick and you can see here, you can change the curve. You can also change the outer threshold, the dead zone and the anti dead zone. I've got my threshold lowered, but let's try that. And we'll hit a to apply. And let's try it again. Look at that. 5.7% error rate. So I lowered it. I lowered the error rate significantly by calibrating it and then raising that outer uh, limit. So now look at that 5.7%. Absolutely perfect. So you need to do that for each side. I think this one's probably already done. Let me double check. Look at that. So we've lowered both sides now. So that went from a seven to a four. So if you have issues calibrating your joysticks, try these settings, try to go through and make sure that you have all, all these steps completed. Worst case scenario, and you can't get these things calibrated properly, play around with the stick height itself. Sometimes these things are kind of tough to push on. If you feel any rubbing at all on this, upper plastic housing right here on your housing it needs to go down more and it sometimes takes playing around with that height to get these tolerances in in spec but like i said anything below 10 percent completely acceptable the lower you can get it the better of course but when you're playing games when you're playing fps shooters racing games all of that it's going to be perfect on this type of error range and like i said if you go and look at most other handhelds that don't have hall effect sticks they're all going to be like that for sure i mean i i can show you other handhelds or you can go look at my channel and see other handhelds i've checked but that's completely acceptable bonus tip bonus tip uh, this video will be coming out next, but let me go ahead and give you a bonus tip, okay? If you have the enable and touchscreen disable shortcuts that I've shown you before, let me show you an even better way how to do that. So you can completely delete these right here. You can go in your touchy folder and where it says devmanview.exe, you can right click that 
and you can send to, or actually you'll have to hit show more options, but you can send to and create a desktop shortcut. Create two of those. Name one enable and name the other one disable. And I'm gonna show you what you'll what you'll do with that. So I haven't renamed this one perfectly yet, but I just I know which one's enable and which one's disable. So once you have that, you'll go to properties and then you will get a keyboard and plug it in. You can use the on-screen keyboard if you want, but where it says shortcut key, control shift alt D, that's what you're gonna want. And then you see at the end where I've got that command after in view, space, disable, space, and then all of that, I got that little script from inside of this folder right here. So the batch file, you can actually open up for enable. You can open this with notepad. So you'll wanna go to show more options. Then you'll wanna go to either edit or you can find out how to do open with. And that's the command right there. You'll copy and paste that into that little address bar that we looked at just a second ago, right there where it says target. You'll paste that in at the end after the whatever's there. You'll hit space and then paste that in. Once you're done with that, you'll hit OK. And then you'll go into here. You'll hit gamepad mode. And then you can program these back buttons. So you can do this one for enable and this one for disable, which is exactly what I did here. So I went and clicked the function button down there at the bottom of the macro button. You can hit edit or create a new one. You go to combine keys and you can see right here. Those are my combined keys. And you can hit that little square edit button right here. Tap the keys to represent what you see here. And the D is for disable. And then the other one that I have is E for enable. And so when I click this screen right here, you can see my touch screen works now. I can move around these icons. Watch this, that, and give that a few seconds and that will disable the screen. Now my touch screen is disabled. Now I can hit that side, give it a few seconds. And now the touch screen is enabled again. So that's a bonus tip for you. All right, so let's shut this thing down and I will show you how to take this and make sure that the screws are properly torqued down to make sure that they're good to go. And we'll actually put on one of these clear ones to see how it's going to look. Now that we're back inside of our ally, I'll show you a few things here also. When you're going to lube those triggers, by the way, you don't have to remove them. You can just use your paintbrush with the uh, Crytox keyboard lube. You can use your Crytox keyboard lube and lube these springs up perfectly fine without actually having to remove these triggers. I did that out of precaution because I wanted to lube the entire module, but you do not need to take the whole thing out. So when you get these loosened up, remember where your screws go, but most importantly of all, I'm about to show you a pro tip that'll help you when you're swapping these things out. So now remember, I know I've shown this before, but this is a very, let's go ahead and remove this just for safety. This is a very tight hole right here. So you will have to kind of press that a little firmly. And remember, these are supposed to kind of flop like that. Let's remove this. They're a little tricky. There you go. I don't like removing them, but once you start, just pull straight out, okay? And when you put these on, you kind of roll it around until you feel it. And you want to do it straight up and down, slowly working that down there until you feel it stop. I think some people just aren't pushing this thing on all the way. I really do. The other thing I've noticed is since there are only two screws on this joystick module and there's three on this one, that might affect how they calibrate because 
there's more of a chance for it not to sit on there right. Even though you're going to have one screw going through here on the back plate, you can see that they put a black plastic little washer right here. And I'm wondering if maybe we need to get some more of these little stick on washers. And if we start having tolerances where like the top part doesn't want to have that full circle, maybe we could kind of raise it or lower it depending on with some more washers. All right. So yeah, the tolerance is on this clear one are way tighter so i'm working my fingers in through here and i'm kind of pushing them like that and that helped me aid it through there that was very tight like very tight the purple ones are much easier to fit in i'm sure the tolerances are going to be different on each one all right so here's my pro tip wiggle 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 you will hold this down in the middle and put this one screw in there like that You'll get it started, but do not, do not tighten this yet, okay? Do that for this side as well. And you'll come over here and you'll just work each side a little bit at a time while maintaining the center being kind of tight. And then you'll make sure each side is torqued down evenly. Okay, so now that you can see there's what the clear one looks like, there's what the purple one looks like. We're going to put this all back together. My camera overheated, so I've got to act fast. So we're going to put the ribbon cable back in. We're going to flip that down. And now we're good to go. Check our work. And grab the stock power adapter because if you take the ally apart it knows that you've taken it apart and it will not let you put it back together and turn it on until you have the stock power adapter on and the orange light comes on once it's powered on you can go ahead and do that and here's the difference between the clear and the purple um i actually kind of like that clear i'm gonna play around with this and see which one i like better but i think i like that clear better to be honest all right, so we're back in GamePad Tester after taking it apart. We're gonna check our error rate. And you can see now that just taking it apart, we've changed a little bit over here. So we'll need to recalibrate it. That's what I mean, where when you take these things apart and put them back together, they're not always the exact same every time because there's only two little washers. So, or there's actually only that one washer up there. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to recalibrate this and do all that over again. But always remember, if you take these things apart, you're going to need to recalibrate it every time to make sure that you have it dialed in just right. All right, guys. Well, I hope this video helps. And if there's anything that you have questions about with calibrating them or putting your sticks back in, definitely let me know in the comments. Hit me up on Discord, however you need. And I'll always be around to help you guys. That's something I really enjoy doing. And I always look forward to the comments. So until the next one. I hope you guys have a good afternoon, good evening, or good night.